YouTube, the last year has been a roller coaster. But even with the high highs and the low lows, I am more confident than ever that the Web3 space and the NFT space are going to be the next evolution of the internet. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about what are going to be the five trends that are going to be shaping the Web3 space in 2023. The facts and opinions in today's video are based on hours of research I've conducted, which of course I'm going to be referencing all the resources in the description of this video, as well as knowledge and experience based on my own experience having worked in the NFT space with over 12 months and having spoken with over 400 different NFT project founder and having worked directly marketed and consulted on 25 different projects. So those information right here, personal experience and research are what are going to be shaping the opinions and facts in today's video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Leon Aboud. I'm obsessed with Web3 adoption and have had half a decade of experience working in Web2, building brands and e-commerce businesses. And after exiting a seven-figure business, I went into the Web3 space and have since built my own project and have been helping NFT project founders do the same. So if you are an NFT project founder, or are a brand looking to enter the Web3 space and need help beyond the information shared in today's video and this channel, then feel free to get in touch with me and my team by clicking on the link in the description of this video so you can book a free 30-minute consultation call so you can learn how we can help you, how we can help your project and how you can get involved with us. Now that the dust has started to settle from the previous bull market, we have a lot less noise in this space. And out of those patterns, there are five trends that I could see shape 2020. And really out of those, number four is the one that I really think is going to be the one that is going to help us onboard the masses, the millions and billions of people into Web 3.0. Trend number one, in 2023, I expect to see a lot more legacy Web 2 brands entering Web 3. During the years 2021 and 2022, we've seen a lot of brands experiment with Web 3 product offerings. And a lot of them were exactly that, they were experiment and they were typically tested at a small scale. And we've seen a lot of big players, brands, influencers, celebrity, practically fail at their Web 3.0 implementation. For example, on this channel, I made two separate videos talking about lessons we can learn from Chris Brown's failed NFT collection. With his hundreds of millions of fans, he, the guy was only able to sell a couple hundred NFTs. Another example of failure is Etihad, basically launching a loyalty program via Web3, which also completely flopped and they ended up selling a couple hundred NFTs out of their three or 4K collection. However, on the other side of the equation, we've seen brands completely crush it with their Web3 product offering. With brands like Nike, for instance, making over $184 million off Web3 alone, followed by Dolce & Gabbana with 23.7 million, Tiffany & Co, with 12.6 million, Gucci and Adidas, 11 million each, and Time Magazine, $10 million. So out of the chaos we've seen over the last year, brands have started noticing the pattern, have started noticing the opportunity, and have started understanding the blueprint of what makes a successful NFT go-to-market strategy successful in the first place. And something we've started notice that is incredibly interesting is that brands are starting to understand very clearly the types of target audience that exists in the web space. Yeah, I want you to think about a pyramid where at the bottom of the pyramid we have the everyday people, the mainstream consumers like Vayner3 calls them in their, their report. In the middle of the pyramid we have the Web3 native people. Those are people like you and I that are into Web3. We might be curious, we might be working into it. And finally at the top of the pyramid, the very tip of the pyramid, we have a very targeted niche. So sub niches, you want to think about communities in the NFT space. And really over the last year, we've seen brands kind of try to hit one of those three target audiences. So for example, we had Starbucks, Gucci, Reddit, kind of bring the onboard mainstream consumers into Web3. So these guys were not interested in targeting, you know, the people that were GMing every morning on uh, Twitter or the people that owned, flipped or sold board apes or uh, azukis or doodles. They were regular people and they were looking to introduce those people into Web3. In the middle of the pyramid, we had brands like Dolce & Gabbana, Nike, Adidas, you know, trying to hit, trying to onboard the Web3 native people into their brands. And this is what Nike did with its acquisition of Artifact and its subsequent launch of different collections. And finally, at the top of the pyramid, 
We've seen Tiffany & Co, for example, only giving access to CryptoPunk holders for its exclusive collection of NFTs, 350 uh, NFTs for a 15 Ethereum mint price. So that's what it means, a very targeted niche. And right now what we're seeing during the bull market is that the middle to the top of the pyramid is getting slowly exhausted by the supply and demand. So there's a lot less people active in the NFT space and a lot more projects, a lot more people trying to target that small niche audience. So why I expect to see moving into 2023 is more emphasis on the bottom of the pyramid where we have the mainstream consumers and a lot more brands for them to succeed at their Web3 product offering are going to have to onboard a mainstream audience into the Web3 space. So introducing people to Web3 for the first time. And this is incredibly bullish because all of a sudden brands are doing the hard work for us. They are spending the marketing dollars. They are doing the education. They are going out of their way to educate people about the ways of Web3. How do you set up a wallet? What is an NFT? Privacy and security and all everything that comes within Web3. Bring those people in and onboard them in, our, in their journey that way we can come in and offer them experiences when those mainstream consumers are more down the line. And this brings us to trend number two, which is we are about to experience new, more innovative and more creative business models within the NFT space. As the NFT space evolves, as consumers become more educated and as technology in the Web3 space evolves, we're going to see a lot more innovative business models. And what we're starting to see is really a product market fit for NFTs. Because up until now, product market fit of NFT is not very clear. For example, when you go to a museum and you look at a piece of art, what is the product market fit of that piece of art? What is the utility of that piece of art? It's art. It's there to be beautiful. It's there to be enjoyed. However, for NFTs, if I ask you the same question, what is the utility? What is the product market fit of an NFT? It's still a very blurry question. I can definitely list you 10 different utilities, but that doesn't mean that there is product market fit. And over the last year and a half, we've seen brands experiment with different types of utility, different types of product market fit with brands like Nike, for example, creating what we call digitals, so physical digital assets. We're seeing a suite of brands, softwares and services like Time Magazine, like NFT Inspect, like a lot of different Web3 specific products that are creating token gated product experience where you have to connect your token, your NFT token to the website, which will then unlock a specific utility, experience, access, whatever that is. We've seen celebrities like Ashton Kutcher, Mila Kunis create NFT show Stoner Cats, where the only way you can watch this is by owning a specific piece of NFT. We're seeing a lot more experimentation. And over the next year, I foresee basically business models to get tested and to really see which of those are going to be the winners of the business model race. And we can see players like Starbucks who are basically evolving the typical pay to earn model into more of an engage to earn. So the pay to earn model is what currently exists in the Starbucks application rewards program, where every time you scan your card to pay for a coffee, you earn X amount of points. However, with the Starbucks's Odyssey program, they are adding the pay to earn model on top of an engage to earn. So now not only do you earn points by buying coffee every time you go to the store, but you can actually be part of quests. You can take surveys, but all of a sudden they started adding layers. So now, for example, you can do daily quests within the Starbucks application that will earn you rewards. They can ask you to take a survey. And if you complete that survey, you get points. They can ask you to refer a friend. And if you do, you get points. So you can start adding layers, gamifying the whole experience. And this engage to earn model is only possible with NFT and Web3 technology. And I can foresee a lot of brands, most retail brands where customer loyalty and customer engagement is paramount are going to start adopting this engage to earn model within their Web3 ecosystem. Talking about experiences and loyalty, this brings us to trend number three, which is token tickets are going to be gaining a fresh round of traction in the festival and concert season this 2023. And that's what I can't wait to happen because one of the biggest pain points, one of the biggest friction points in the entertainment, music and concert industry is actually ticketing, especially Ticketmaster, who tick currently the company that currently owns a monopoly over the ticketing industry. People absolutely hate them. If you've ever bought a ticket on Ticketmaster, you would notice the crazy, outrageous service fees that come with it. Right here, I'm seeing a guy on Reddit saying that Ticketmaster charged him $55 for a $75 ticket. Sure, that's 
seems totally reasonable, says the post. And on the consumer side, no one likes Ticketmaster. And on the artist side, no one likes Ticketmaster because they take revenue and a percent out of the equation. And on top of that, artists do not have control over secondary market. However, with NFTs, the logic makes a lot of sense. You can verify the ownership of a ticket. No more falsifying tickets and selling fake tickets at the door of an event. Number three, you also get control over the secondary. Let's say you buy a ticket and you wanna resell it on secondary market. No more posting that on Facebook Marketplace or selling that at the door of the event. You can just resell that on OpenSea. And one of the videos I made was key lessons from Tomorrowland's NFT launch. Tomorrowland, the festival company, was practically experimenting with NFTs by launching a collection that would grant you access to specific events. Some tickets granted you lifetime access to Tomorrowland and they launched it in, in three series. One of the first collection, unfortunately, that they launched was on FTX, so that collection is probably lost completely. The second collection, fortunately, was launched on Magic Eden. And for example, let's say you owned the NFT that would unlock access to a specific area of the Tomorrowland Music Festival where only accessible for NFT holders. And we saw a lot of festivals like Coachella, Universal Studios, all experiment with NFTs. And in 2023, I can expect to see a lot of those smaller scale experiments be scaled up to a little bit larger scale. And every year getting larger until 10 years down the line, when in 10 years, everyone is walking around with their NFT. And on my side, I do think I have a pretty good pulse on the market because I do speak with 20 to 30 new project founders every single week. And through the many months I've been in the NFT space, I'm starting to notice a trend, a pattern, and a change in the types of founders I'm talking to. So four months ago, I would speak with a lot of people building, you know, DGen projects, a lot of people building Solana-based projects, and slowly, slowly, this has been shifting. And right now, I'm speaking a lot more with Web2 business owners, SaaS company owners, music festival uh, organizers, food and beverage companies, I'm speaking all of a sudden with a lot more of these founders to help them build their Web3 product offering and go-to-market strategy. And I am noticing a trend towards ticketing. Now, everything I just mentioned will not be possible without trend number four. And all the trends we've covered so far, so more Web2 brands entering Web3, new business models that are going to be emerging, and number three, token tickets are going to go mainstream. None of those literally none will be possible if we don't have trend number four in place, which is Web3 mobile experience are going to go mainstream. Literally so far in the NFT space, using your mobile is useless in Web3. You cannot buy and sell NFTs on OpenSea using your mobile. You cannot connect your wallet. The only thing you can do on your mobile is just check your MetaMask wallet and just show off your NFTs. That's all you can do. And maybe send money using your different exchanges and wallets. However, so far, mobile usage has been very limited. And mobile devices were the catalyst for Web2 mass implementation and are going to be the catalyst for Web3 mass implementation as well. According to the statistic by Market US, in 2022, around 46% of all finance apps that were being built and launched were based on Web3 technology. And Web3 and blockchain-based games increased by 2000% from 2021 to 2022. So a lot of these new innovations, those new builders that went into Web3 building products and services for Web3, we're going to see a lot more products that are ready to go on the market in 2023. Therefore, heating up the battle, the Web3 battle for mobile devices. And the fact that we've seen Apple take a strong stance with its app store policy that they have to take 30% of all sales happening within its ecosystem, even on NFTs, even going so far as saying that they want 30% of gas fees, shows that this is a conversation that has been going on at Apple. It's been a while and all of a sudden now they are forced to make public, which is leading them to make those types of announcements and really make those types of decision or reinforce their stance or policies. And finally, the last trend that I foresee happening in 2023, and that actually is an anti-trend, which is that we are about to see a lot fewer mention and a lot less emphasis on the metaverse. Really, 2021 and 2022 have been a year of ecstasy. Everyone was so thrilled of this new thing called NFTs. It was the shiny new object syndrome and none of us knew what it was, none of us understood what it was, but we were sold this dream, this future, 
of the metaverse. And we all felt like we were living in 2040 while the rest of the world was still stuck in a pre-pandemic world in 2020. And this new shiny object syndrome caused the whole hysteria with the metaverse, everyone talking about metaverse, metaverse land on some random game, pumping and making millions of dollars of volume every week. However, we have all seen how this ended. According to Nansen NFT Index, this which basically shows the performance of different sub-niches within the Web3 and NFT space, we can see that Metaverse Land is the second worst performing meta in the NFT space, with the first one being gaming. So if you were to invest $1,000 at the beginning of this year, your money would be $500 in Metaverse and $237 in gaming. All this coupled with the headlines of Facebook spending billions of dollars in the Metaverse and calling it a waste of money. Oh my God, on top of the recent event that happened by the EU, the European Union who basically invested 50k to organize a metaverse party and only eight people ended up attending. So it just shows the metaverse is not here yet. People are not interested in the metaverse. There's no use case for the metaverse. And if we are yet to find the product market fit for NFTs, I can tell you it's going to take time for us to find a product market fit for the metaverse that makes sense for companies to invest millions of dollars and basically building their entire brand around the metaverse. Even according to Vayner3 report, we can see that metaverse mentions and earning costs has literally flatlined. So you can see a huge spike between 2020 and 2021. And then 2022, it's a flat spike. And that coupled with the sentiment of the metaverse and earning calls basically going back down. So even for you building in 2023, if you're looking, if your timeline is 2023, you might want to stay away from that meta Yet. So here we are, five trends that are projected to happen in Web3 in 2023. Number one, more Web 2.0 brands launching in Web 3.0. Really, the next NFT bull market is going to be fueled by brands bringing their audiences from Web 2.0 into Web 3.0. Number two, we are about to see a lot more new and innovative business models as brands start getting more creative and as technology allows us to experiment in more deeper and different ways with Web3 technology. Number three, token tickets are about to get a lot more mainstream in 2023, especially in summer as festival and music season. A lot of brands that experimented with NFT ticketing in 2021-2022 are going to be scaling their initiatives in 2023. Number four, Web3 Mobile with Instagram launching its NFT marketplace and Starbucks launching its Odyssey program on mobile is going to make Web3 Mobile a lot more accessible. And finally, we're going to have a lot less emphasis on the metaverse moving forward in 2023 as brands realize that we're still very early and at least a decade away from a metaverse that makes sense. With that, ladies and gentlemen, please let me know in the comment section, is there anything you think that is going to be happening in 2023 that was not mentioned in this video? Is there any of the trends I mentioned that you might not agree with? Just let me know in the comment section. I would love to have a conversation about this with you. And if you wanna continue learning more about how to build a thriving business, a thriving project in Web 3.0, I'm going to be linking a video that I think you're going to like. With that said, I will see you very soon. Ciao.